Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about nickel hydrogen batteries. So let's dive right into it. We are not talking about hydrogen, we are talking about a type of battery. So what's the problem that we need something weird as this, like nickel hydrogen battery? Its uh, problem is with renewable energy. Renewable energy is here, it's real, it works, everything is awesome, except the part of intermittency, meaning it's not reliable. Basically, you turn your switch on, uh, so sun might be like, you know what, Da shall not receive sunlight, clouds shall block it. What the hell are you gonna do? Wind has even worse reputation because like, you know, solar is surprisingly uh, reliable in places like closer to equator, but uh, when you go to higher latitude, wind becomes more reliable, but wind could have like, I'm giving you 500 megawatt to 5 megawatt. This has happened, real life. So that's a very serious issue. So what does that mean? That simply means without grid scale batteries, meaning batteries that have g, g amounts of power, meaning in gigawatt hour capacities, we cannot achieve 100% fossil fuel uh, free energy system. Like no matter what you do at the end of the, uh, you know, at the end of it, you have to have either natural gas or coal or nuclear maybe. So that's the whole reality of it. At this point in time, we have uh, energy generation side taken care of. If we have some buffer, basically some giant ass battery, uh, will be sorted. Now, what do you mean by grid scale? At this point in time, grid scale simply means you have to have somewhere close to gigawatt hour capacity. What's that, that translate to? Well, think of it this way. Normal electric car could easily have 30 kilowatt hour capacity to 500, uh, you know, 500 is like like very super high car, like super heavy trucks kind of scenario. So gigawatt is one magnitude higher than that. So fundamentally speaking, lot of capacity. At this point in time, there is only one thing that can truly deliver that, that is uh, pumped hydro. But pumped hydro are like, it's here, it's real, but problem is they are very picky. You have to have boatload of water and you have to have boatload of height and you have to have, you know, subsequent architecture that you need. So it is very picky. And on top of that, it should be able to dump megawatts of energy on demand. Meaning even if you design this puppy to like, you know, I'm gonna slowly give out 100 megawatt, that's not good enough, especially when you are balancing something unreliable in uh, you know, power generation side. So you should have the ability to like, let's say you're designed for trickle output of 100 megawatt. You may have a scenario where let's say weather changed and wind stopped blowing. You should be able to ramp your power up to like, let's say you are discharging at one gigawatt. So that's also a, you know, requirement. Megawatts uh, of energy on command meaning if a dispatcher you know, there are people who are working in the grid they are called dispatcher if they are like i want more energy they should be able to flick a switch tada energy and it has to be cost effective for large scale at this point in time you can take any technology like heck you can try uh, lead acid battery i think the biggest lead acid battery bank is around 30 megawatt hour capacity so you can get that point like if you really want to you can do whatever you want it's just like is it cost effective meaning price in and performance out is it balancing it out or not because again you can make a car out of uh, like you know mm, platinum it will last forever but it's, it's not worth it so that's the whole point of it it has to be cost effective so what are our current solutions? Current solution is lithium ion batteries finally reaching mass production. Now this is one core aspect that you must have. There are 10,000 technologies that you will uh, hear about on papers every day. Whereas this technology and that technology and hula -la technology and jinga -la technology, you have to have. Even if they are true, it will take them decades. And many technology do not fall, fail in lab state, do not fail in patent state, do not fail in like, you know, making prototypes. Where they fail is making it financially viable to do mass production. We started uh, lithium ion in 1990s. Now we are reaching a point where large-scale mass production is beginning let that sink in it took almost 20 to 30 years so same will be happening to any other technology unless they are using like you know control c control v lithium technology which uh, some people are suggesting that lithium um, so, uh, sodium batteries should be able to do but again so far again i'm still waiting so it's one of those things that you must understand now Lithium is here, people are building a large scale system which is not reaching gigawatt but it's almost reaching 500 megawatt hour capacity but at this point in time biggest problem is that they're not long lasting enough meaning even if government is getting some grant or even if government is like able to eat up the cost even if they buy it, build it, they still will not have the ability to like justify it simply because over time they have to do it again, again and again so sometimes as quickly as like you know 5 years or 10 years so it's not long enough and it requires very high maintenance. Now that may sound odd, it's like why the heck batteries require maintenance? Well, even though battery itself are solid state, the problem is a lithium ion 
chemistry, temperature wise is very picky. Basically, it's like humans, it requires a very specific temperature. The range is very narrow, meaning you have to have air conditioner. Yes, there are air conditioning on the system, meaning they have liquid uh, system running on them to cool them, and they have radiator system that is dumping heat, meaning all those systems, all those pumps, fans, everything will require a continuous maintenance, meaning the amount of people you have on site to maintain the inverters, to maintain the, the software that is required to maintain, clean the fans, clean the radiators, clean heat exchangers, all that piles up your uh, you know maintenance cost and it's also very high risky because while lithium is powerful the problem is it's powerful meaning it can go boom it's almost like you know if you have something that is inherently powerful it can inherently go boom be it steam steam used to go boom like a steam locomotive used to like train train is at the station and boom it has happened more than enough time that people anything that contains energy has the ability to give off that energy for free so this could happen that's a tesla so that's an inherent risk system many time you want something on this sort of scale something that's inherently inert basically what would have worse could happen if you have a, a pumped hydro system failure it would be inherently designed in such a way even if dam failure happens it just flushes a lot of water minor flooding but this will catch on fire so that's one thing you have to understand and it cannot really scale up efficiently it is awesome for uh, you know cars and all that just but even that if we are tangibly thinking about replacing every car with an electric car uh, it's like good luck trying to figure out and grid scale yeah that's not happening fundamentally we just do not have enough manufacturing capacity or even raw materials at uh, low enough rates where it can be justified and that again low enough rate will become a problem simply because it's not long lasting enough so that's the current uh, messy situation we are in so what about this nickel hydrogen battery? It's a weird battery simply because it's a mix between battery and fuel cell. Uh, battery is something of this way. Nickel metal hydride battery, you are using that. There is a very good chance you may have Xbox controller that has that or rechargeable AA batteries, it already has that. Now here's the deal. The one side of it, that equation is not very good. It's, it's That's why it has a limited lifespan. Somebody figured out what if we remove the other side of the equation and replaced it with hydrogen. Again, hydrogen uh, system is already used, but in gaseous state, meaning there is actual hydrogen gas in your battery and very high pressure, 12,000 PSI or 82 bars, meaning it has to be contained into some GG amounts of uh, tanks, basically something uh, higher than CNG that we utilize. So it does require a very high pressure. So that's why I specified because it's working on a gas, it can be considered as a fuel cell and it does have the battery kind of system. So you have a nickel reacting on one side and a hydrogen, uh, you know, converting into water on the other side. And it's a completely sealed loop. That's why it does have much higher efficiency compared to a fuel cell system. Everything is awesome. And one of the main amazing aspect of it, this is a battery bank used in Hubble. Uh, it is very stable. How stable? It can work below minus 40 to upwards of 60. Now, minus 40, again, for me, does not make sense simply because, again, I live in India. This temperature is not something I know. But minus 40 is like something that majority of the planet barely goes down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Minus 30, rarely. Like, again, people. Like, if you may Antarctica, that's, that's not where majority of the Earth's population lives. So, majority of the Earth's population is inside this boundary. Even in India, hot side is like we are kind of hot. So, if you do not have shade if you let this puppy directly exposed to the sun it can easily reach to 50 degrees celsius still inside that uh, you know operation temperature range and if you just have a shade i'm not talking fans cooler just a shade a basic shade temperature will drop if it's a dual layer shade meaning you have shade and another shade on top of it to you know radiate heat properly like how james Webb, uh, uh, james Webb telescope has like you know layered shield temperature will drop enough where it's like bro i got this don't even think about it i got this temperature range is awesome then this is one of the amazing aspect of this battery it's put and forget for 10 to 30 years again we have actual real world experience with this puppy that it just put it and forget it it has been utilized in satellite industry for long enough and uh, it can survive almost all level of abuse meaning you, what happens if you overcharge it it makes hydrogen it's like whoa 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 that could go boom not really the other side will also release oxygen to counteract it if you can uh, cool this puppy properly especially if you're overcharging if you're not overcharging then it's not an issue if you're really over frying it then it needs a cooling system but again that shall not overcharge it and again if you have a giant grid scale system inherently would be incapable of overcharging that's required like you know shut down power of all country and then feed the power into grid bank system then only you may be able to overcharge it and it can withstand very uh, you know serious amount of abuse even if you reverse the polarity it can still withstand it so it's a very robust technology and it's also used in ISS. So 
let that sink in iss required a battery that is like something that you can counter right now majority of low earth uh, orbiting satellites they are like uh, they wear down very quickly simply because of the battery because if you do not use this sort of battery you have to use a battery that will barely last three to four years barely simply because again it's going through earth uh, basically earth shadow too many times too many times this puppy can handle that like right now there is apparently world record for this battery to survive in uh, basically this Hubble telescope because generally main expensive equipments are in generally geostationary so they do not go in through shadow that many times so they do not have charge and discharge charge and discharge charge and discharge this battery is like I got this even if you are brutally charging it and discharging it as quickly as possible for decades on end it's like I got this again this battery was replaced in uh, uh, Hubble I think in 2009 but you get the point again they will wear out over very long amount of time but you, can, you get that context of it. It's like very long, very robust, and like in majority of satellites, you utilize that if they are expensive satellites. So nickel hydrogen battery. It's a, it's one of those things that is not new. It's like we are already using. It. It's just above us. So what's the issue with this magical battery? Well, it's made for people who have really deep pockets, like really deep pockets, or people who need 24 into 7 reliability, meaning they were not going to talk about it. For example, uh, let's say Hubble telescope is not Hubble telescope directly. It's uh, basically reworked uh, spy satellite. The whole satellite bus, everything is like a reworked sa uh, spy satellites. And those sort of people who are, uh, you know, commissioning a spy satellite, they do not have to worry about money. So in those sort of scenario, they're like, dude, shut up. Take my money, give me something that is 24x7 reliable. They're not one to like, oh yeah, the satellite has to be decommissioned because it's like, you know, the battery worn down. No, shut up, take your money as much as you want. Give me something that I can count on for decades. That's why it's utilized. And it was overlooked simply because it's been running from as long as like, you know, Apollo mission kind of era. So people kind of overlooked at it. And not to mention it because there was a lot of company that already is working on that. It has an aura of it's like, yeah, it's here, it's been working, but it's hyper expensive. That's why nobody thinks about it. So this new company, uh, Arun, I'm very sorry about the name. I'm pretty sure it's French or something like that. It's like uh, Arun Vrun uh, is trying to make remake this sort of system. Now, his deal, what they're trying to do is like science is taken care of. Everything about this battery system is known, tested, real world tested. So we don't have to worry about it. It's just they are figuring out how can we make it cheaper? How can we make it mass producible? Let me be very clear. Making something in like, you know, selective batch, that's super easy. Making mass production, that's the key ingredient. Now, they're going to make it into mass production. Now, will this be cost competitive to lithium ion? Hell no. Will it be cost competitive with lithium ion on large scale? Absolutely. Like, wow. Again, large scale lithium requires a lot of maintenance. This will not require maintenance. Large lithium installation are very big expenditure that you have to redo every, uh, let's say, 10 years. Again, this can easily touch 30 years. So in those sort of scenarios, it's like, bro, don't think about it. And again, these are far robust system. Inherently, they are robust. It's like, I got this. You do not have a scenario where it's like, you know, uh, one lightning strike, everything catches on fire. Don't have to worry about it. You have a scenario where like earthquake happens and modules bump into each other. Don't think about it. You have heat wave. Don't think about it. It can survive serious amount of abuse. So that's the whole point. This company is solely focusing on one element. It's like, how can we make this into a mass production item like how we had a handmade mobile phones back in the old days now we have mass production devices and don't think too much about it same thing this company is trying to do physics is tested engineering is sorted uh, real world test data is here it's like there are companies that are making these batteries and they're like yeah we have 80 years of like you know in space uh, uses and zero failure that's how reliable these puppies are so fundamentally it's awesome technology all they have to do is figure out how to drop the price and even at the dropped price it will be very expensive it will be only suited for commercial installations so or like you know grid scale batteries so what we can expect in the future well this is truly unique technology flat out all other battery system that i've seen be it uh, uh, nickel hydride batteries or things of that nature uh, basically replacement for lead acid battery they're like more or less same technology only with bit better this and bit worse this this inherently has something that we truly want especially in india uh, that high temperature tolerance because india easily reaches 50 degrees celsius and there are places that gets even hotter than that you want and again you want to uh, you know populate those places with a giant solar farm you would like to put a battery bank right next to it so that's why this unique uh, selling point that it has that temperature resistance is really good and the maintenance cost is really desirable for people who are making giant units out of it that the fact that the one third of their cost will be reduced significantly again they still would have to have people again if you are talking about a giant solar farm you still have to have people who are cleaning the solar panels so again those sort of people can like you know just uh, you know have a look at these sort of things or uh, if you have to have inverter technicians uh, then again inverter technology would be the same 
so that's the whole point no expensive materials used so that's another aspect no fire hazard that's really gg and great asset for stationary battery now this is one core aspect that you must understand every time we are talking about battery everybody is like we want more battery power here's the deal not really simply because if i told you what is more powerful a liter of petrol a liter of uh, rdx rdx is far weaker than a liter of petrol it's like what here's the deal rdx has everything it needs to dump energy in itself meaning it's self-sustained. It's almost like a solid rocket booster. It's self-sustaining. It's like it does not need things from outside. Now, petrol, while it has more energy, it has a limiting factor. What is the limiting factor? Where the heck is going to get oxygen from? And even if you have a liter of thing, it still has to be contained in a container. You still have to burn it. You still have to wick it away. That's why it's inherently stable. Even if you let it evaporate in the atmosphere, atmosphere itself has a contaminated oxygen supply. It's only 30% oxygen. That's also, I'm exaggerating it. It's not that high, but you get the point. Like there is nitrogen. That's like chill, bro chill and what happens if you take like let's say jet fuel how much powerful it is really is we use it as rocket fuel to go to the moon that's how powerful that puppy is how do we get that kind of power by feeding it raw liquid oxygen so when we comes to battery battery is almost at rdx level meaning inherently the only reason they don't go boom is the, how the chemical chains are uh, aligned so the chain not as in like the how the energy dumping process happens that's why so that's why it cannot be put out that's why you cannot put out battery fires inherently it has both side of the reactants in itself so if tomorrow let's say instead of like uh, let's say seven megajoule per liter somebody's like here's 17 megajoule per liter you may not want that in your car because something bad could happen accident incident a fault things of this nature happens at that point in time god help you so that is why you may not want a battery that is like you know 10 times more powerful again even if somebody can figure out magical graphene level technology and somehow figure out how to have that much surface area increase where it inherently has that kind of power you want to be like uh, how about I stay away from it? How about I? Because you really don't want to have a mobile phone that if it goes boom, it inherently takes out a whole building. So fundamentally speaking, there is chemistry level limit. That's why I specified even steam goes boom if you put too much energy into it. Same thing will happen with anything that is carrying energy. As long as two part, you are safe. As long as it's in one part, not safe, even at lower energy levels. So this technology is also a very good example. It is stable, it is good, but it does not have the oomph required to uh, drive a truck or motor or things of that nature. It is not suited for mobile. It's like if you try to make your phone, it will become same size as like, you know, old Motorola first phones. Yeah, it will become the same size. So fundamentally speaking, this battery, while it's amazing in its use, it does not replace lithium ion because lithium ion is like, this is the chemical we are almost here in real world use. So fundamentally speaking, lithium ion will still be the king of uh, you know, cars and all that just. And what you can expect in lithium ion? Expect longer lifespan. That's what everybody is working on. Longer lifespan, quicker charging, uh, better reliability, more robustness. Those sort of things expect that. Expecting more power out of it, like twice the more power, four times the power. You may not want it. Even if some engineer can figure it out how to do it, you may not want it. So, and again, I'm pretty sure somebody might crack it and then like, oh, there is a reason why we do not want, you know, 50 megajoule in a contained system. You always want like 50 megajoule, no problem, as long as it's two part component, as long as the second part is easily contained. You do not want to figure out what happens with an energy a rocket goes boom. So, or a starship, if it actually goes boom. So that's the one thing. You never want to have that much energy in one place. So this was my presentation on this sort of unique battery of a nickel hydrogen battery. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.